Hello, it's Sarah. Boy, guys, I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Um, I just never got to it, but here it is today. All right, what have I been doing? I've been wood burning. Um, I have shared some of my um, projects in the past, like I have my little um, wooden spoons that I've done. I used the all-purpose, like, what was that? The one that you can get in the craft stores. It's kind of like a cross between a soldering iron and a heat tool. And a, like, anyway. Um, but I ended up getting myself the Colwood Super Pro 2. It's just one of the companies that you can order um, from that makes a product that has um, a dial where you can turn up the uh, hotness, the hotness or whatever. It has two wands I guess you call them ones on the detail side and ones heavy duty so you can also order other tips for your thing so anywho I got back into it because I was inspired to do a mandala a wood a wood burning mandala okay and I'm going to show you that in a sec um I took Barb's uh beyond mandala madness Barb Owen. She has, um, I guess, an online class that you can buy, but I was part of a different one that she did kind of like a mini course of that, and it was a little bit um, along the same lines. Anyway, she taught us how to draw our own mandalas and how she likes to color them using colored pencils, markers, and um, gel pens. Uh, so that, having done that, and then I saw this wood burned mandala, I was like, I gotta try it, you know? So I, and I should have started on, so this is just one of my older projects that I did, and I love adding painting to my, um, my wood burning as well. So, um, what I'm trying to do at the moment, though, is figure out how to shade my work without paint but I'm not proficient yet I've done a lot of board burning I've been burning for two weeks straight practically well a lot more than I had in the past and I'm still not good that at shading but anyway um, I got these uh, circle blanks I think they're about they're like three and a half inches I want to say at Walmart because everything's shut down now um, Walmart's pretty much the only place you can go to get craft supplies, but, um, I also looked through my stash to find anything else that I could burn on. I found this little, this is a, a kind of like a candy dish. You can get these in a thrift store. And then the class that I, the woman I was taking classes from at the time had, would have her husband cut the, the lids and then she would sell that as a project. And I decided to burn on this one because I, I have a lot of wood but the thing about this type of wood burning actually this is a piece that I got from Ren Renee Mullins Plum Purdy this goes with one of the books and so I could trace the pattern on here and I could burn it with wood and this is the wood that I love I, I think this is called basswood something like that but it's super smooth. It doesn't have a lot of um, imp imperfections or grooves in it or um, knots and sap. It's just really nice to, to burn with. Um, I haven't gotten to that one, but I did just burn another, my last one of these little, um, it's like a foam stand. I got this from uh, Tracy Moreau's um, painting website she uh she loves painting on this so this is a this is the pattern that i burned onto a blank um and then i just painted my last one of these and gave it to matt for his uh phone but anywho i found um an old i mean i this might have even been gifted to me and i want to say this is, might like, be like balsa wood but it's a very lightweight wood and it's, it's just what you get in the craft store. It's nothing special. And I don't prep the surface first, which I think you can. You're supposed to like soak it with water and then let it completely dry out and then sand it. And I think I've done that for like one or two pieces, but I didn't do it to any of this stuff that I'm about to show you. 
So I, I just, I started with these blanks and I just started making like this one, I tried to sand it off and you couldn't. Um, but I'll, I'll zoom in on a couple. They're, they're only a couple inches big. And what I was trying to do was do some dark work because like I said, I'm not that good at shading, but I thought, well, I can just darken in a couple areas, you know, like on this one, this is a good example. Um, leaving some areas not darkened and some darkened, it just gives you that contrast. So it looks pretty, um, you know, and I did it a few different ways with a few different tips. And um, then I did this, then I did the box and I just randomly just started making circles. Like I, I actually did this on the kind of in the middle, which would have been nice for the top. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, I was just playing around, finished that, did that. And then I found this company because on um, Amazon, I don't know where I found, I think I just Googled, um, let's see, maybe basswood shapes, something like that I probably put in. Uh, and I came up with this place. It's called Woodpeckers. So... Uh, woodpeckers they are in wow they're in Lakewood New Jersey so they're right in my state um, and like a, a four a 10 inch cutout I did I got my first order I think I got two 10 inch cutouts and one 14 inch and then my second order let's say one two three four five no I just got one and one um, anyway this is I did post this one on my my Serenity Crafts uh, Facebook page. Let me go back up. Sorry. Anyway, this is what I wanted to do. I was inspired by a picture I saw on Pinterest, probably, or it might have even just been on a wood burning um, page that I look at of a mandala, and I thought, wow, perfect. You know, I had just taken that Barb Owen class and I had been making all these mandalas in paper, like these. So, I, these are just with color. And so, I did this one and I wanted to, this one is one of my favorites, I wanted to repeat this in wood burning too. So I did that, but I actually colored it in and... I like that look, and this is like, um, there's a company that does this, and I, the name is escaping me right now. Um, but that's what, what inspired me to mix the paint and the burning together. But now that I'm like doing this with the dark and the light, and I'm learning how to create this dark background, or you know, make darks and lights. I haven't gotten to shading, but I got the darks and lights. Um, I wanted to have one that I could that could share the wall. So this one I did, and this and this are pretty much the same pattern. Let me move the big one. And then I just varnished these with um, first I sprayed it because I've noticed when I brush on the varnish, it will pull some of the darkness, and you'll get like a it'll kind of stain the rest of the wood. So first I sprayed it with just a regular um, spray varnish. And then I used um, a matte finished varnish um, for that one. And then this, like I said, this is the one I colored, but this is basically, it's the same thing. I measured it out, like you just use your compass to, there it is. I don't have a fancy compass or anything, but I would just take it Gosh, hello, right here. And just go like this and go like, okay, that's my first circle. And then make my first circle. And then measure this one out to like, okay, that's my second circle and second circle. So, and then I just freehand, like I draw in the different shapes. So it's a little bit different. Like definitely my hearts on this one are bigger than the hearts on this one. I didn't put as many circles on this last row because circles are hard to make with my burner. I, it's like I've gotten the hang of it since this one. 
Um, but this was kind of just like a practice trial and error type thing. I was using a lot of the different tips to do different things. Um, but I like it. I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. It looks pretty good on camera. Uh, and that one kind of matches or goes with the big one I did. But <laughs> when I played around with these little ones, I got the feeling ab about this little one here. This kind of looked like surfboards to me. And I decided to give that a shot again on one of my discs. And it turned out, let's see. So this is just a plain one. And all I've been doing is sanding it and I haven't been sealing it at all or um, prepping it with by wetting it. So I'm no expert, you guys. So this was the first one I did. My attempt at this six-sided mandala. And this one is very easy to make. You just go like this. Um, I forget what they call it. And I did one on here already. But you take, make a circle. Just make a circle, oops, make a circle any size. And then pick up your pointer and just make half circles. I, I can't find where I'm. Anyway, this is how you create that, this pattern. And this is what I started playing now. I should have done it on paper first. Big mistake. But I wanted to burn. That was my whole, my point was I wanted to burn. And so I just went right to the wood. But, you know, now that all said and done, I don't love this one. I don't love this one. But I love this one. And I learned a lot in the process. So see, that's until you do it enough and actually use the tool, change your heat settings, you know, change your tips, figure out whether you need a detailer or the heavy duty side, all that stuff. That's how, how I learn anyway. I learn from doing. And yeah, I would learn from a class. And I did order a book and I, it's coming this summer. It's, I pre-ordered it. But anyway, um, I'm debating, do I add color because or either I add color or I can just do some darkening of a few areas like just these areas that I've done here I like it plain the other thing I was thinking was I could add browns all browns and then it would still stay this like dimension or the one dimensional color tones, color palette, instead of being like bright, like, you know, where's the other one? I don't know. I keep flinging everything. <laughs> like this one, like I don't have to add this much color. You know what I mean? I can just kind of practice with shading and where I would put shading and stuff. And I think it could look really pretty, just having that tonal. Like, I don't know what you would call that. Like, um, in paper crafting and stuff, it's called uh, maybe shabby chic. You know, if I just keep it all creams and browns and stay in the, this family, color family. But it's so, excuse me, it's so tempting to add color. So I made these waves in this one. The sunrise or sunset in this one. And then there's little waves just lightly. I did little waves in here. And in the background here, I put little um, like wind swirls up there. And then the heart, the flowers. And then I think that kind of looks like a keyhole. That wasn't my intention. Um, and I just did these like checker pattern or whatever. But this was after doing three different ones. I tried a few different design ideas. The, this um, was supposed to be like a palm leaf. I don't know what I was going for up here. Um, I got a little, you know, a little carried away. And so I just started really playing on here. Just doing whatever I wanted to see what it felt like and what it would look like. 
Um, this one was okay except for I ended up switching the heart and putting the heart here and when I did that it created the star because this is the heart with the diamond and when I put the heart with the diamond down here on each one it made a star in the middle that was a happy accident um, and then I left off the palm leaf and then here instead of making it into a triangle I just left the whole thing and did that because like see on these there was little triangles that's what I was trying to copy anyway it took me you know three now I am going to try and sand this off because we have a um, a big sander in the basement and just try and get it off I mean I can still use the back although this one has a blemish here and they're four dollars I'm gonna order more um, but I really enjoyed it and then because I love that so much I decided to do one in paper and this is where I really I did this before I did this because I didn't want to do another one and mess it up um, and I'll color this probably with uh, I think I'll use um, my watercolor pencils what are they called my ink tense pencils I've already inked it so we'll see how that goes but it's been sitting for a day at least um, so yeah this is this in paper form so I can see how I like it in color but I like it like this but I still think color would look great so I am debating what else did I want to show you that's basically it I think I'm gonna put a couple things down here um, like this is something that I did before with adding color see so I just made my own design on this is just a dollar one of those dollar frames this is really good to um, burn on too and then I just painted it with washes of uh, acrylic paint um, and then this is like a door hanger thing a door they have these probably Hobby Lobby um, really easy to paint on I mean to burn on um, so I am still playing I'm still learning and let me know in the comments what you think should I add color to this I think I'm gonna leave I'm so tempted to do it like I said in the tone on tone so just use browns like vary from light to darks in all the browns and see what that looks like because I think it could look like I shaded it you know um, but anyway that's what I wanted to share I'm having trouble with my home computer and that's where I do my uploading so I'm gonna go try and get this uploaded hopefully it'll work and um, I'll be back Thanks, you guys. I've been in the craft room a lot. I just haven't been um, filming. So hopefully I'll film, maybe I'll film a little um, tutorial on one of these. They're so fun. All right. Thanks for watching.